Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu, the latest Ubuntu, on this MacBook Air 2012, mid-2012. I prepared the thumb and all I have to do is open it up and start it. If you want to boot from a thumb, you have to press Alt. Here is Alt. On the newer machines, it's Option key. The moment you hear the sound, you press Alt. And you keep pressing it until you get a menu. You see, now you can select the drive. If you remove it, poof, you just add it back and it will appear. This is something very nice. Okay, so let's start the installation and we will go through it. This is a welcome menu and you can choose between Try Ubuntu and Install Ubuntu. The difference is obvious. If you uh, press Try Ubuntu, you will get into Live CD. Previously it was called Live CD because it was on CD. Now it's no more on CD, but you can see it still shows the CD. So if you try Ubuntu, you will get into the operating system which runs directly from the thumb. Instead, I will choose to install Ubuntu because this is what we have to do at this moment. You see, you have here normal installation, minimal installation, download updates and install third-party software. So this is what I'm choosing. And now you can just press install now and Ubuntu will probably create only one partition directly on your system and that's it. If you want, you can press on advanced features and you can choose LVM or even ZFS. I will choose ZFS because I'm curious how it goes. I will not do encryption and um, press OK. Now it will tell you that the disk will be modified, how it will be formatted, and I will press continue. It's a weak password, so yeah, if you want, you can use some other um, characters to not have it weak, but this installation is temporary, so I do not care. If you are curious what it's doing, there is a small arrow here and if you press it, you see this part is extended and you will see what it does in the background. Just a few moments and we will most probably have the first reboot and the only reboot. Usually Linux doesn't require more than one reboot on installation. We'll see if it's the same. Now. The only option you have is to reboot, which I will do. We are in. If you want to use this new GNOME, you can do it, no problem. But I can show you how to switch to the old version. I will open terminal and for that I need to become root. sudo su and you have to issue your password. I will update the package management and then I will install something I will show you. Failed. Okay, so this means we do not have internet. Yeah, Wi-Fi not connected. I have to connect to a Wi-Fi. So now we have to install something, apt install gnome shell extensions, yeah? So this is what you have to write. And now we log out. And on login screen, you select your user and then you see this cog or whatever will on the uh, lower right side and you press on it and you select GNOME Classic. Put my password. Okay, start using Ubuntu. And now you have Classic GNOME. The applications menu is here. It's way better right now. Okay. If you are curious how ZFS layout is, after the installation, I was also curious, that's why I was choosing ZFS. They have created two pools. One is R pool 
for normal uh, file system and B pool for booting. ZFS list will show you all file systems and you can see here B pool is boot and R pool is your data. You have some built-in applications like Office, LibreOffice is quite okay and so on. Sometimes you will have to update software. You can install now or remind me later. I will install it now just to show it to you. Now it's installing the updates. It's an usual process every operating system has. The only difference is how the packages are managed and that's it. When there is something, some modification related to kernel, you will have to reboot. If you select 4K, you will get black screen. But anyway, this computer... Ah, okay. It doesn't work. Anyway, this computer doesn't handle 4K very well, so forget about it. With any operating system, you will not be able to play 4K. As I said before, some updates require a start. You can restart now or restart later. I will restart now and be done with it. Let's see if it has any trouble waking up. Perfect. No trouble at all. The buttons are working. We have screen illumination. We have keyboard illumination. Now it's not visible, but it works. Sound, mute. What happens if I do play? There is nothing to play. And that's it. There is something else I will do. You see, if I want to click, I will have to press click on the trackpad. It's something I do not like. I prefer to touch click. So you go to mouse and touchpad and there is this option here, tap to click. Now I can tap to click. Look, very nice. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to go deeper, you will need to learn more, but no problem. If you have any Linux questions, let me know in the comments. I have 20, over 24 years of experience in Linux administration, so do not hesitate to ask. Okay, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.